In the previous video, I showed my PDP-11 73. That came quite late in the history of PDP-11s, whereas what we brought in here is a replica, a modern replica based on a Raspberry Pi of a much earlier PDP-11, the PDP-11 70. And these were much more visually interesting. They had sort of flashing lights on the front and toggle switches that you can, you know, paddle up and down in order to program the machine. So it comes as a kit. We have been sent this, not an advert for them, but I do think it is a pretty cool kit. So we have a bag full of switches, we have LEDs and a couple of chips and some diodes and some resistors. This is the front panel. Uh, let's see how quickly I can peel off the front of this. That's satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> Very brief overview, these are the LEDs showing the data in the currently selected address. These are the LEDs showing the current address. The few status LEDs to show kind of what mode the PDP-11 is in. And then you can switch these addresses and data to different registers and things with the rotary switches on the right. And then we have this board. So we're gonna solder up some of this today, maybe not all of it. <laughs> um, and on the back here, we put a Raspberry Pi, so. May not have been very sensible. It is sticky though, so <laughs> I think I might trap these bits in the case. <laughs> right, so let's start with uh, the smallest components. That's going to be sort of this row of diodes across here. Um, these are some diodes. These diodes do have to go in the right way. I think I'm only going to do two or something. That is the wrong way around. Try not to flick solder on your lens as well. Let's see how they turn out. Quite nice, actually. <laughs> Only two diodes, but... <laughs> so is this our... Here's what we built earlier. Yeah, we're not actually going to build this entire thing right now. How long did it take to make this or put it together? Uh, it took me about three hours. I had a sandwich in the middle, so... <laughs> quite a bit smaller than a actual PDP-1170. So a PDP-1170 would be sort of 19 inches. I'm using uh, Imperial because the, that's how they measure uh, the racks. Um, and it would be, I don't know how, so you have sort of the control panel, which is sort of this big, and then under that you have the, the card cage. So quite a lot larger than, than this thing, but most people don't want a full PDP-1170 in the house, although if you want to send me one, <laughs> that's fine. Um, so let's talk a little bit about PDP-11s in general, and then we can kind of explain the console a little bit more. The PDP series of computers was basically all based around uh, octal, so um, all of the word sizes of these PDPs was uh, in multiples of uh, six. It's pretty ASCII, um, and in order to represent uh, kind of the full character set you would need six bits. Uh, um, so your word length of the machine would be sort of 12 or 36 or you know 18. So that was convenient as well because we could think about instructions or code listings in octal. So each digit would be three switches on the front of here. The PDP-11 though was late 60s, early 70s when ASCII was really sort of taking off and you know all computers were going to be using ASCII. So the side effect of that is that we wanted 8-bit word length machines or 16, you know, multiples of 8. So an interesting side effect of DEC wanting to stick with this octal notation while also switching to ASCII and 8-bit based uh, word lengths is that we have sort of three switches and three switches and three switches. Uh, so, you know, 0 through to 7 on each of these. But then at the very end, this 21 bit, the most significant bit on the machine, it's just on its own, it's all alone. So you can see they were clinging on to Octal and they didn't want to give it up. I think we should probably enter a small program using the switches. Uh, we'll chase a light across the screen. That's generally like sort of the hello world when you don't have a terminal with you. When you first set up the PiDP11 and first boot it up, it will kind of do this idle LED pattern. An actual PDP1170 wouldn't have done this, it would just sort of wait and do nothing. So I have on my phone here a short program which is I think commonly called chasing light. So what we're going to do is we're going to halt and reset the machine. Well, we're going to make sure we put the right address in. So we're starting at 1000, load address, and we're going to say so 5000, 
deposit 5200. So each time you do this, you're selecting something that's like writing a number and then you're saying, right, put this in a register. Yeah, you're actually putting it straight into RAM. You're putting it into that, yeah. into that memory address. So last one, five, and then... And you've got it set up so that after you've done one, it clicks onto the next one. That's, yeah, that's just the default. So once you deposit, it increments the address register. So you don't have to you know, manually insert the address first and load it. And then manually you would... I mean, this is a lot of work. So <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to do this for... You, you wouldn't want to sort of... Yeah. Type in the address and then also toggle in the, the, the data that you want in there. So I'm going to put this back to zero and then 1000, which is our starting address. Load that and unhalt and then continue. What have I done wrong? <laughs> is it what's setting up here? No, it's not that. Uh, See, the thing is, I grew up in an age where we had to type in, in basic yeah. program listings, and that felt like it was really hard work. And now I'm seeing that you have to <laughs> put... Well, yeah, so this was 20 years before. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so the BBC was 82, and this was sort of late 60s, yeah. so... Yeah, um, okay. yeah. Right, we're gonna, I'm going to reset the whole machine, which is, uh, there's a secret kind of uh, reset button on here on the PyDP11, so let's see. It's finally running. We tried a couple of times to enter it. I think sometimes because there's a simulator running in the background, interrupting it from what it's currently doing and trying, I think it introduces an extra layer of sort of problems, whereas an uh, actual PDP-11, you would enter the program and hopefully it would run properly the first time. But we got it running, so you can see there is an LED chasing directly across the screen at the moment. We can actually halt this machine and then we can run it one instruction at a time. So you see the address register uh, incrementing by one each time and every few instructions this will jump across to the left until it wraps back around. So it's overflowing basically. It, it's again. Yeah, it overflows and comes back to bit zero. This machine is so much faster than an actual PDP-11. Um, the speed at which it's, it's chasing across the screen is, well not the screen, but you know the console is a lot faster than it would be on, a, on a, an actual PDP-11. Essentially what this program is doing is we clear the register zero, we increment it by one so that it has you know, a bit in it, and then we rotate that register to the left once. Uh, we reset the bus, which just adds a little bit of a delay so that we can actually see the LEDs changing. And then finally we jump back to instructions to the rotate. So when this bit gets to the end of the 16 bits, it, it wraps around back to bit zero. So we, we see this bit moving very quickly from address zero to 16. I would ideally like my PDP-11 to be on 24-7 at home, but that would cost me about 300 pounds a year. Uh, whereas this, it's five watts, and uh, that's about five pounds a year. So. <laughs> Are you using it actively? Uh, when this is at home, I have it now running a web server. Maybe I can give uh, Sean a link and we can see if we can crash it with some swarms of people. Um, that would be fun. I mean, that, that's, that's the other thing, because it's emulated, you, you, you can just take a backup of your SD card and uh, if something goes wrong, you can go straight back to it. So when you're actually playing with hardware, there's so many things that can go wrong from like, you know, disks crashing on Orlo 2 drives. Um, power supply is failing, uh, it's always a fun repair. But in this, I mean, it depends if you're more interested in the software or the hardware. Uh, I think I'm more interested, uh, no, I like them both. Send me a PDP-11. <laughs> I'm gonna disconnect it from, from the mains. <laughs> Good plan. I think it should be fine anyway, but. Um, I will spin it around, I'll just remove these ribbon cables. Down, and then... Event the key up. Mouse click events. We probably wouldn't get one when the mouse is moved. If you think about it, as the mouse is being moved, you'll get lots and lots of events. Most of